recording has begun. Okay, can you all hear me? All clear? Okay, hello and welcome to today's webinar about e-invoicing and blockchain, brought to you by Digital Playhouse Foundation. My name is Electra Frost, and I'm a practicing accountant and tax agent and co-founder of Digital Playhouse. So we're very grateful to the uh, tax office today for making us part of e-invoicing week with this opportunity to host this very interesting webinar. So thank you for joining us today, everyone. And it'll be my pleasure today to introduce you to Mark Stockwell, the director of e-invoicing e at the Australian tax office and my good colleague, Ray Wang from Luca Plus e-invoicing software. So let's commence. So just a bit about um, Digital Playhouse first. We are a, um, a, we're an actual physical space, a learning hub, a social enterprise and registered charity located in regional Queensland. And so we're creating like a prototype, a new regional support model to um, improve digital capabilities and financial literacy in regional um, Australia. We're um, in this new digital revolution, which is very challenging, there are many challenges and opportunities for people to improve their livelihoods and their prospects um, of all ages. So we're a, we're a learning hub and we cover everything from digital technologies to blockchain technologies. And I've encountered a higher degree of resistance to techn uh, digital technology in the region. So we, we do have a, a reason for being and we, we get people involved and the more you learn, the more you um, feel competent and, and enjoy using digital technology. So we're a year old, we're a startup charity and currently depending on uh, donations and volunteers to make everything happen. So we very much appreciate those of you who donated to our fundraiser when you booked your tickets. Um, so yes, just a bit about what we're doing. These are some of our projects, which is all, all take a learn by doing approach. And many of you today would have um, been part of herd communications through our project accountants on chain because accountants play a very important role in um, disseminating knowledge through the rest of the, the population. Okay, just the, the general disclaimer for Ray and myself. Um, I like to say if I didn't say it, if I, if I said it, I didn't say it, is the, the general financial disclaimer. Um, look, we speak with enthusiasm and encouragement about our activities and our products, and we hope that it'll inspire people to become curious and do their own research. So seek professional advice, uh, learn more, maybe offer professional advice yourself. It's very much needed in the e-invoicing and blockchain spaces. All right, so we're going to have... Uh, first up, we'll hear from Mark, who will be delivering his e-invoicing week presentation. E-invoicing has been around for a few years, but now we're fortunate the ATO is giving us a bit of a rollout roadmap and guiding small and medium businesses uh, with the adoption side of things. So have your questions ready for Mark at the end of his presentation. I'm sure after doing these presentations all week now, he'll have some pretty good answers for you. And um, then we will have uh, Ray Wang joining us. So there's nothing better than putting all of this into context by making it happen with real life applications we can use. So Luca Plus is an e-invoicing software that we're, that we've used. And now we'll assume that you have a basic understanding of what blockchain is. So blockchain is part of this presentation, but we're not going to teach it to you today. There's not enough time. Digital Playhouse, however, can help with that. We have some, um, some learning programs coming up. Um, so today's takeaway with blockchain is that it's going to be so much more than crypto. Blockchain can be used in combination with other emerging technologies to improve business. So Ray's going to speak to blockchain in his presentation in terms of its utility and benefits when applied in a business real world context and with particularly e-invoicing. So we'll take it away now with um, Mark. Oh, can everyone see this? Oh, hang on. Okay, I think we can see it now. Can everyone see my... Um... I can see it, uh, Electro. Okay. Fantastic. All right, Mark, please take it away. Thanks, Electra. Uh, and happy e-invoicing week to everyone participating today. Uh, great... Uh, Great opportunity to speak to yourselves. Um, 
Um, I'm going to talk about e-invoicing specifically. Uh, so you're getting a bit of a two for one today with Ray on uh, blockchain as well. Uh, but before I jump in and talk about the benefits, um, what invoicing is and how you're going to get started, I thought I'd just give some context to people to understand why the Australian government uh, uh, took on uh, e-invoicing for, for our economy. So firstly, um, we commissioned a report several years ago, which was asking small business, what are some of the real uh, business irritants or issues they faced in running their business? Now, unsurprisingly, the invoice uh, and the uh, administrative burden that goes with that was one of the things they called out. They also called out things about like uh, late payments, uh, the complexity of dealing with a lot of large uh, customers with multiple different portals and the way they had to interact with that. So, you know, there's very clear there was a need to actually try and address that. The invoicing was and now is the, the uh, ideal solution for that. And in, in the interim uh, period, we've also seen the emergence of uh, cyber security and, and fraud. So that's been added to the number of drivers of why we uh, think e-invoicing is a fantastic solution for the Australian economy. Um, if you think about the, the security issue, which has been in the paper a lot lately, um, a, ACSC, or the Cyber Com um, Commission, uh, reported that over 220 million was lost last year. Um, and we're on trend this year to even lose more through uh, scams affecting business. Uh, a majority of them are unfortunately uh, against uh, small and medium businesses, um, and you know the number is on the rise. Um, I happened to be part of a panel only a few weeks ago in another regional area, it's Caloundra, and uh, one of the um, co-presenters on that day was uh, a gentleman from ID Care. They're a small business, not-for-profit business uh, at Caloundra, so regional, um, and they actually support small business where they've been subject to. Uh, a cyber event or trying to protect that. So um, very interesting presentation he provided, but one of the, the stats that stood out for me was when a, a company does um, fall victim to this, only about 5% on average of the funds are ever recovered. So it is a really uh, large impact upon business and hence why uh, we need to try and protect it, the businesses um, and obviously removing email, which is the main um, channel that the, these uh, scams occur through. Is, is, is part of the, the um, business. So a couple of things which um, come through that report I spoke about earlier. So one was how do we uh, become more efficient and how does the economy therefore uh, benefit from that? So we also commissioned a report through uh, Deloitte uh, uh, Access Economics and what that gave us is a starting point. It, it told us there was about 1.2 billion uh, invoices on an annual basis through the Australian economy. 90% um, of them are uh, processed manually, uh, probably no surprise to most people here. Um, there's a big discrepancy in terms of the average cost in terms of how you process an invoice from a normal PDF uh, email type of uh, arrangement to the new e-invoicing um, arrangement, which is only $9. So you're getting a very strong ROI. Um, so it, it's kind of a bit of a no-brainer from a... Um, uh, from an efficiency, efficiency perspective. Um, but, sorry, I just lost my space there. Uh, efficiency perspective. But there's also other benefits that go with that. And I'm gonna actually outline them very shortly. But what I wanna do first though, is uh, talk about what e-invoicing actually is. And that's the, the next slide we're gonna go to. Um, so what, if you look at the slide there on the top line, the bottom line, the top line is the general process you would expect to see most clients using, where they're creating a PDF or even not creating PDF. They're attaching to an email. It's an email that's the transmission between the two parties, sending that email, receiving, downloading generally, printing out, uh, and then generally it's data entry if they're using an accounting package and data entry back in that package. And then uh, at some point along that chain, they'll uh, pay as well. So if you compare that to the bottom line on the slide there, which is a straight through process. So this is the new uh, uh, e-invoicing. So what this is about is software to software. So we're removing the email. And as I said before, one of the big benefits and risks we have for business is the email and fraud. So we're taking that out of the equation. And so what we're doing is in uh, uh, the software that the buyer and the supplier has, has been updated uh, now, and we'll actually have the right, uh, applying the right standard. And what that means is uh, seamlessly, the buyer and the supplier will use their own software and the data relating to the invoice will uh, seamlessly flow between that. So there's no need now for the recipient to actually get the email, download, et cetera, and re it in. It's already sitting in their in-tray ready for payment. So it's, it's fastened up that process, removed all the manual uh, uh, P 
pieces along the way. And it also ensures it is landed with the right recipient. So there's no excuse for it's not in my inbox or I haven't received that and things like that. So there's that certainty and surety and confidence that uh, the businesses get that go with that. So that's really um, and probably the takeaway point I would say uh, to uh, you when you're talking to your clients, it's about just think about there is no email. If someone says you, I'm doing uh, invoicing and I'm using a um, email to transmit, that's not e-invoicing. And secondly, we also hear people say, oh, I use it because I've got a portal and I have my customers come and put their information into my portal. Again, it's not e-invoicing. Yes, there is a bit, uh, there is some efficiency with that uh, way for the actual large business that's got that portal, but it's not so efficient for the uh, business that's actually trying to interact or trade with that business. So uh, that's um, part of the issue. Also, um, I'd say, now, how does this work? Um, you know, where's the magic apply? So really, it's, we've adopted an international uh, open standard. Um, it's called PEPL, if you hear that word, but it, it's probably irrespective. It's an open, international open standard used to about 40 countries so far and in, in, increasing in our region, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Singapore, Japan. We're all using it. Uh, and there are other countries in the region now uh, looking at it and starting to adopt it. But, you know, it's starting to actually merge across the, the globe in terms of the number of countries using for, for sure your clients that do international trade. Um, how I like to describe it, and it might be easy for people to understand, is no different, I suppose, from our mobile phone network. So if I've got a, um, a mobile, I want to text Electra, I just pick out my phone, put in her number, because that's the identifier she, that I have for Electra. I send that through. She uh, receives the text seamlessly. Uh, doesn't matter what phone she's using, doesn't matter what provider she's got. I'm using Telstra, she's Agnoptus. It's agnostic to that. So she seamlessly receives the text message. This is exactly the same for uh, e-invoicing. It goes through a, a new data network. And I'll talk about that um, uh, in a second. And, but the identifier we use for this network though is your ABN or your customer's ABN. And that's what uh, gives the certainty that it lands in the right place because there's in the background in the software, there's a lookup system that actually checks where that ABN is and it sends it to the right in tray. For be, for, to be processed. So that's basically how uh, the operation works. Now, on the next slide, um, I'm going to talk a little about the ATO because this is one of the very first questions I get from um, accountants and, and bookkeepers. Why is the ATO involved in this? Uh, and, there's, and there's quite a few reasons. So I'll run through them quickly for you. Firstly, we've been involved in this for several years, uh, uh, going back to commissioning that report to understand business irritants. And through that, we said, well, we need to try and support business somehow. And that's where we got to with um, uh, initiating the international standard and rolling out here in Australia. Now, each of the jurisdictions or countries that uh, support this international standard need an authority. In this case, the government selected the ATO. And why did they do that? There's a number of reasons. So firstly, um, is our experience with rolling out large um, administrative change to our business. And if you think of Superstream a few years ago, single touch payroll now, the COVID stimulus packages, they are all um, large transformational change that ATO has been involved with and interacting change with business. And the only way we've been able to do that success successfully though, is through our relationships we have with our uh, digital service providers of the software companies and the agents, tax agents and uh, bookkeepers. So without those partnerships, we would not actually be able to, to uh, see the change we've had in the Australian economy. And that's uh, why we selected there. The other reason is that they gave the legislation to give us powers to be the governing body for this uh, only to the ATO. So what that legislation provides us is, is to govern that network. So we're, what we're doing there is we're making sure that all the um, connect the business connectors into that network. So if you're in, in the mobile phone context, it's the Telstra and Optus of the world, but they're not involved as connectors. It's people like Luca Plus, who you'll hear from uh, shortly from Ray. So we've... Uh, Connect, we've um, accredited about 30 uh, software companies to, to support this, the whole Australian business economy and uh, government to actually connect into that network and enable them to start sending their data or their invoice data through the network. So that accreditation process is very rigorous um, and we're making sure that we've got only the most robust, uh, highly credentialed uh, companies or entities supporting business very stringent uh, security um, protocols that they need to meet and also their clients meet to actually use the network. So we're safeguarding the data and the businesses that actually use that um, uh, network. 
A couple of other things we do and why the, the role of the ATO there is, one is uh, we advocate to federal government about where we can continue to take invoicing into the future. Uh, supporting businesses, obviously, what we're doing today is out trying this week, the invoicing week, trying to raise the awareness of the invoicing so they can avail themselves of the uh, benefits that go with that. Um, supporting the service providers, likewise, they've been busy over the last couple of years getting their software ready so that uh, it's all interoperable between all the different types of software that uh, business or government want to use, and therefore you'll see that seamless experience. Lastly, we've also been driving um, uh, the federal, state and local governments to actually get on board with this, and I'll update that shortly. Um, part of the federal uh, positioning for e-invoicing, though, is we want to put uh, money where our mouth is because that's what people are asking us to do uh, rather than asking them to do something without ourselves doing it. What we've done is we've enabled all our federal agencies, so 97 of them, uh, that was completed uh, in July. Sorry, we've got one to go, but yet yeah, that's been complete. But what we've done also as an incentive to our um, suppliers is we'll pay in five days. So what that means, traditionally, we pay um, our accounts in uh, 20 days. We've actually increased, it, or increased that to five days, uh, five working days for eligible um, invoices. Uh, what we're doing there is demonstrating the efficiency of uh, the system, but secondly, making ourselves more efficient as well. But also it makes our suppliers more efficient because they're using e-invoicing and getting um, uh, paid quicker. So that's kind of why we're doing that. The last point I must make on this and re-emphasize to everyone is we do not see any of the data. Uh, as I said, the legislation is limited to only governing that network, accredit accrediting those uh, access points and making sure uh, that the uh, software is correct and, um, uh, and safe for all the users. But we've got no powers uh, um, or policy to actually receive any of the data. We don't have any infrastructure or services to receive the data, so we're kind of blind to that. And that's why the invoice goes directly between the two trading partners and is not uh, dissect, deflected in any way. So just want to re-emphasise that point because um, it does get asked quite regularly. Um, on the next slide, I'll just give you a quick status now where we are. I said about the government agencies are now ready. Uh, and paying in five days. So uh, I'd urge uh, any of your uh, clients that have got um, uh, businesses that supply to government, particularly federal, uh, get on board, board and start sending invoices to them. Uh, secondly, the state and territory level, uh, also really good news there. New South Wales, South Australia are largely complete. They've still got a few agencies to go, but they're pretty well there. Um, WA, the first agency is now live. Uh, and the other states are at various stages, uh, either they're piloting right now, they're doing some build or, or even testing at the moment, so they're not far off. So state and territories are pretty well covered shortly. Uh, locals, not as much. So really uh, urge yourselves in those uh, urban areas uh, to actually ask your council what they're doing about it. We've only got about four so far, but I am aware that there's quite a few in that um, development phase, so that we'll see a whole host of them coming through. And what that will do for us, hopefully, is then start to spread that word in the regions as more of the local councils uh, come on board. Uh, and I know basically their software is now ready, so uh, there's no excuse other than to understand what they need to do to um, come on board. Uh, in the business space, um, really happy how things are going there. So that's what invoicing is a week uh, is about: is raising awareness. In the large business sector, um, you know, they've got obviously more complex sort of arrangement put in place that's been taking a little bit longer for them. But all again, their software, their large ERP system solutions already. Um, we've got some early adopters, uh, big Australian brands like Bunnings, uh, Woolworths, BOC Gas being a big utility. So these are already uh, on board and actually uh, trading with their um, supply chain. I'm um, expecting a few other large business announcements through uh, the retail sector, banking sector, uh, large professional companies, firms. Um, so yeah, big business is now on board and seeing the benefits as well. Because not only do they see um, some efficiencies, even though they may have EDI portals as well already, but what they're doing is shoring up um, their supply chain and making their supply chain more resilient. Probably a bit of a learning for them in the last few years. Uh, and hence, uh, by doing this and getting their supply chain more resilient, obviously, um, future proofs their own business. For small business, also good news. And now all the major um, software uh, around Australia is now enabled. And what that means, though, is technically, um, we have about 2.3 million small businesses that use a software package of, of sorts. And what it means, they're now all technically enabled. All they need to do now is do the registration process and they can start sending and receiving. So we're really well positioned 
uh, for the small business sector. About uh, 20,000 have already uh, done so, registered. So we've got a, a good uh, number already starting the process, but uh, obviously on the back of the invoicing week and as the word spreads through supply chain and your own client base, uh, we'd hope that those numbers will um, dramatically increase over the coming months. Other factor on that is, you know, why I'm talking to, uh, particularly to um, uh, accountants and agents is that um, they, business have told us about your role as their trusted advisor or their software coach and, and you know, making their business more efficient. So um, I think it's a good news story, fits perfectly with your advisory type of uh, services that you might provide. And it's, a, and it's something not only protects their business from a uh, cyber perspective, but also makes them more efficient. I would say to them, uh, say to you, sorry, if you've got clients say, look, I'm already pretty well automated. I, I'm pretty digital. I don't really see any benefit from efficiency perspective. I think that's when you're talking about, well, how cyber, cyber safe are you? How, um, um, sorry, I'm jumping ahead here, Electra. Sorry, I'll just go to the next slide now. How uh, cyber safe are you? Um, how quickly are you getting payments? Can you get quicker payments? Because if you're using the invoicing, we're seeing faster payments coming through to you. Um, you can make better decisions uh, because you're getting real-time data and therefore it's kind of helping you with your decision-making. I talked about um, the saving. I forgot to quote that. I, 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 there's a very good stat around small business. The average small business will save about 11 um, uh, working days uh, in uh, productivity back to the business to allow the business owner then to redivest that his time or their time um, back into the business or, or, or other value um, added uh, services. So that's kind of a, a telling stat you can share and that's being backed up by a lot of the software companies. Lastly, uh, companies that have got a green credential, um, it actually helps with reducing paper, ink. Um, also printers and scanners can go. You don't actually need that if you're doing all your supply chain through e-invoicing because um, you, you don't need that support or those tools to actually do your, your work, which would be fantastic. Gives you that also flexibility. I know a lot of us work in offices but you know, if you don't need those tools of trade, like you don't always have a scanner or a um, printer in your uh, home office, but it actually allows uh, people more flexibility or staff more flexibility where they can actually do their work. So another Im important part. Lastly, in terms of benefits, which uh, is emerged, I suppose, for medium and large businesses particularly, is the whole uh, discussion around ESG. Um, so environmental, social governance uh, framework. Um, it's, uh, invoicing ticks all those three pillars and it's something that a lot of the large corporates and their boards are very interested in how this will actually uh, enable them to be more compliant with ESG requirements. So something to consider if you're dealing with um, large corporates. Lastly, on the next slide, I'm gonna just quickly say how to get ready. What I'd recognize this is what we, in all the discussions we've been having with business though is each of them are unique. And, and as you know that, um, and subtly, it'll be subtly different. As I called out before, some are more automated than others. Some of your clients are just purely using paper today. So, you know, we've got that real diversity of different uh, requirements. What I would say, though, if they've got a software package, they're always, already one big step ahead. Um, this is another reason to actually get better benefits from that software subscription because they're using it more and more, and the invoicing will certainly um, help them with that. Um, if they're not using software, um, there are free um, portals out there and it just allows them to actually trial e-invoicing by using those free portals with uh, low volume uh, clients um, and you know, something that might be then the next step for them to actually become more digital by using actual something free that they can use live in their business. Um, we are advocating them to talk to their software providers. Um, we've got a, um, a register on our website, uh, which is our uh, Pebble Ready or sorry, Invoice Ready register. What that is over time, as uh, software is enabled, it gets put up onto the software. So if businesses are looking for someone that, uh, that is not there already um, providing services to them, then they can go and, and try some of those uh, businesses as well. Now, the other really um, big story for your small business clients, though, is whilst it's out there, uh, it's included uh, generally, just need to check with each provider though, uh, generally at a low cost or, or even in some cases free. So um, uh, great news in terms of um, the cost issue and therefore brings about that ROI for themselves. Um, I'll probably stop there because I'll leave some time for questions. Last slide I'll just throw up, which you can go out to lecture, you'll send this out, I think, is on the last slide there, just um, there's a lot of information on um, ato.gov on this topic. 
um, please look at that and some of the materials there and also a link to that register if you needed to uh, share that with any of your clients. So thanks for that lecture. I'm going to uh, pass back to you, I believe. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. So, um, yeah, it sounds like there's a lot to be positive about e-invoicing if you run a business or if you are a small business accountant or advisor or bookkeeper. Um, I guess there'll be a bit of work for us to do in the setup. You know, we're quite used to um, we, we, um, implementing new technologies across the taxpayer population. And, but there, there comes with benefits to our industry as we're setting up our clients for the future. As you say, they'll be more competitive, resilient, um, future-proofed. So in getting them paid faster, so their businesses are good clients for us. But on that note, uh, Mark, I just have a question for you before, uh, and everyone else, please type your questions in the chat box so that we can ask Mark any questions you have. I'll start with one. Will the ATO be supporting tax and VAS agents who will be the ones proactively onboarding clients to this system and doing the implementation for many? Um, look, I've only got a very small team, so I won't be able to get out to practices. I certainly am happy to be doing these sort of webinars and help doing Q&A sort of sessions to actually work through um, some of the practical um, issues that uh, accountants might have in terms of questions. Um, we've got a lot of information, like I said, on that uh, um, uh, site as well. And I know all the software packages are now putting up equal information for each of the different packages out there. So you'll be able to avail yourself of that and, and share that with your clients as well. Um, to actually look at the unique uh, features that each software package, a lot of it is you know, similar because we've given them a standard they need to build to, but obviously each of them have their own uh, design and um, uh, feature set that is, is unique in that regard. Okay. Now, does, and I, I've just shared some more um, resources in the chat box as well. Thank you, Mark. Uh, does anyone else have any have any questions for Mark at this stage? But perhaps we'll we'll look forward also to. Um, some, some future sessions that, um, that we can, as we're learning along the way, we can um, reach out for, for more help. No okay. problem. Um, okay, we might have some questions at the end. So, we, oh, does the ATO have access to e-invoicing? So Rex yeah. has asked here. No, that's, no, Rex, thank you for the question. I get this every time I do a agent or bookkeeper session, it, it always is asked, so thank you. Um, now, as I was saying, the legislation we would provide to be that authority uh, for audit purposes. Um, so what we do with that is that's one of the benefits. I probably I skipped over a bit there is because you're getting your clients now having all the invoices uh, in the system, it's, it's helping you in terms of the, the record keeping for those clients. So actually it's all in a digital format. Um, we support um, the e-invoices just as you do for the normal standard uh, GST uh, valid invoice. Um, so yeah, we would be if if you had a client that we're doing. I mean, I'm not in the I'm not in the order space, but yeah, I'd probably be asking for that file which provides the um, details of the invoices. Uh, if if they needed to look at the invoice for any reason, you've got it uh, on hand. But uh, yeah, we support e invoicing obviously from a GST and a tax perspective. Okay, it'll be interesting to see how that how that rolls out over time. So. Um, yeah, the earlier we get onto it, get some clients onto it, maybe get our own practices onto it and, and get familiar with using it. What should we do? Question from Nehal here for you, Mark. If a customers if customers are not using e-invoicing, so that they, they don't need to pay on time. Oh, if we have different um, customers that don't want to use it. Yeah. So just on the pay on time, so the, the pay on time only applies to federal government agencies. Business doesn't have to pay in the five days. That's only uh, federal government agencies will pay in five days. So you'd pay in normal uh, terms, whether using invoicing or traditional way, uh, email PDF. Uh, that's your normal standard uh, business terms you would uh, use under both of those channels. Um, but what we're saying, though, is what we've seen through the modelling and that Generally, the invoice is able to be paid quicker, and we're seeing probably about seven days quicker on average in terms of payments starting to flow through the system. So, you know, it's an advantage in terms of be able to, if you're using it with your supply chain invoicing, you're likely to be paid quicker than the traditional way because you don't have to worry about any lost errors or things that could go wrong sort of thing. Yeah, and um, I think Ray will also be speaking to how in business we might want to be doing business with other businesses that are yeah. using e-invoicing because they'll be seen as more trustworthy, which could be a, a exactly. exactly. And on that point, sorry, like on that point too, what we're seeing, you know, different software has different packages, but I've seen a couple of demos.
and straight in the campaign, might have the PDF uh, email that's been keyed in there, or it have the uh, uh, it might have the invoice which is dropped in there. It's still in the same intro. The business can see that what they need to pay, but some of them are, are marking them with a small e for e invoice or some other way of denoting um, uh, that it's it's different. But it's only through the channel. So really, the experience from that perspective when you go to pay is no different. Okay. Now, Glenn has asked um, yeah. who's considered authorised to register a business for e invoicing. Um, can a BAS or tax agent register on the client's behalf? Ray has affirmed that. Yes, he can. What, any comments, Mark? No, that, that, that's fine. Um, you know, we had to check. Um, like you, you, do the normal, you do the normal consent thing with uh, clients in terms of the service you're providing. So, you know, you're covered from that perspective. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Now, just uh, do we have any more questions before we um, progress? All right, you can keep posting them in there and we might address them at the end. Okay, now before we move on to Ray's um, section, um, he's going to be talking about the benefits of combining um, PEPOL e-invoicing, that's the, the ATO's platform that's being used here, with blockchain and why this will be good for businesses in future. But um, so today we won't have time to, to explain what blockchain is. I encourage anyone in the accounting profession or related professions to bring themselves up to speed because what's happening on the blockchain is seen as the new internet by many, an internet of value where th there's instant transfer of assets that can be expressed in monetary terms over the internet between peers without the need for intermediaries. Um, so there's, there's a lot of commerce to be happening in this space in future an online space where people can instantly transfer value between each other um, over this internet of value, eliminating a need for middlemen and, and many costs. So, um, so theoretically, um, anything of monetary or social value may be transferred between parties like currencies, assets, stocks, intellectual property rights, uh, property ownership, and maybe even voting in elections. So, Transferring value is already supported by um, SWIFT and, and um, block Bitcoin, Ethereum, and there are emerging technologies like Intellectual and PayID. There are many apps that are making transferring value easier with existing infrastructure. So Internet of Value, it sounds a bit like the Internet of Things, but it isn't, but they don't exclude each other. I like to see understand blockchain. People see blockchain as just crypto, but it's a lot more here. Blockchain can be used to enhance other technologies. So devices in a network of the Internet of Things, for example, may be exchanging value too. So the value of blockchain to many people, many businesses, industries, is going to be, I guess, in the interoperability between um, sort of government company and decentralised systems and in how blockchain can create digital trust in that environment. So some countries are using blockchain systems to, to restore public trust in some areas of government spending and elections. I, I believe the Brazil blockchain network is in development and Zimbabwe is, is trialing a new blockchain voting system based on Bitcoin technology. All very interesting to watch what's developing in the space. Um, so blockchain can be used in many different ways. It can be integrated with other technologies like AI, VR, big data. Um, it can enable people to retain their own personal private data when interacting with other platforms. So uh, zero knowledge proof. Um, it can be used to prevent fraud and prove authenticity in the insurance industry with luxury goods, diamonds, many use cases. Um, if you understand and, and look up the, the features and qualities of, of blockchain, this will fall into place. That providing permanent data records, security of health records, supply chain management, procurement, logistics, tracking the movement of goods tracks, goods being um, uh, along a supply chain, um, securing um, users' data in education, um, financial transactions being stored permanently on a blockchain, making those records tamper-proof. Um, some companies are exploring how to combine invoicing with blockchain to prevent invoice fraud, for example. Um, and there are crypto invoicing tools out there already that are working with on-chain transactions. How does this tie into e-invoicing? Well, we're going to have some questions for Ray. Um, well, I had a great discussion with Ray last week and we, we talked about how blockchain can enhance e-invoicing and, and more on the future commercial possibilities there. 
So setting up for the future. And the PayPal e-invoicing uh, network is a great place to start here. We may get into some DeFi lending, borrowing, um, the metaverse, <laughs> doing your invoicing from a shop in the metaverse. Um, you can't do that with a PDF, right? So uh, getting acquainted with e-invoicing is a, a, a great place to start. Um, so on that note, I'm going to hand over to Ray as soon as I find the slide. and share. Two. So the delay. Uh, do, you, do you want me to? Uh, can you see, see my screen now? Want... Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to share my slide? Just to make it easier. Oh, for you we didn't to... check that. Did you want to share yours or do you just want to tell me to go next like Mark did? Uh, I'll just share it share my just make oh, it easy okay. for you yeah. all right i'll stop sharing cool. all right thanks everyone for right. just waiting we didn't oh, sorry i didn't confirm that earlier that's okay just make it easy for you can you guys see my screen um yes i can thank you ray that's right nice and clean yeah great all right thank you for that introduction electra um Hey guys, it's a pleasure to be here to present the Local Plus and then talk about uh, e-investing on the blockchain and then let you guys know how we actually help business um, to run in a much simpler, smarter and faster way. Uh, my name is Ray Wang. I'm a co-founder and the chief entertainment officer at Local Plus. Um, and um, so I'm also coming from an accounting background as well. So yeah, I would like to ask the first question. Just let's you know, get some uh, exercise of your fingers, right? I use the chat box. So let me know how many of you is actually accountants. So if you're accountants and bookkeepers, please type in one in the chat box, let me know. Uh, if you're business owners, please type in two. Right. Oh, there you go. You can see a lot of uh, business, yeah, a lot of accountants, right? And then people like to exercise their fingers. That's great. Maybe I should talk, let you guys type in more, all right? Great, all right, a lot of accountants, cool. <laughs> Well, this well, is a chain session, so. <laughs> I see, I see, all right. I see. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's great, that's great. All right, cool, all right, good to know. Thank you, guys. Yeah, as I said, I'm also coming from an accounting background, um, and um, um, and now I'm just running this software business at uh, Luca Plus. And, uh, well, yeah, so Luca Plus, what we do, right, we are actually a software platform that actually help business to solve cash flow issues and also help them to save more money and more time through our smart B2B payment solutions and also e-invoicing solutions, which is part of our accounts receivable and accounts payable automation. So yeah, and also we aim to become the first accounting transactions that gets processed and paid on Mars, right? So that will be the time that uh, we are doing business on Mars. Um, and uh, for sure, for, uh, for that time, no one's going to send you a PDF copy of invoice anymore, right? So we believe it's definitely it should be e-invoicing and uh, on the blockchain. So, all right. So today, um, I would like to structure my presentation in that way. So first, I'm going to talk about um, why trust and transparency is very important for business to accounting transactions, and also related back to why we do what we do and how we actually help businesses to become better. Then I will talk about a little bit about the, um, come back to the main topic about e-invoicing. So I'll talk about a little bit about the uh, the four corner models um, and explain to you guys uh, in a bit deeper terms, let you guys understand how it works. Uh, and uh, also I would like to share you guys some interesting um, stories about uh, what is my experience and uh, what happening in the industry as well. Um, and that also relates to why we do what we do. And in the end, um, talk about, um, I'll talk about um, what, what we plan to do in the future and uh, how we're actually gonna maximize e-investing technology blockchain with decentralized finance, lending pool, and uh, NFT, or, or have doing business in metaverse, or things like that, right? So first, right, let's talk about right, why trust and transparencies are important to business. So, yeah, as we know, trust is something that takes years to build, but it can break in seconds, right? So that's why it's important because it helps us to build better business relationships because it's an all-brainer. 
the more trustworthy and more transparent you are, the better business relationship you will have. So people will certainly would like to do more business with you. Um, and uh, for in that case, it will certainly increase your productivities because people like to do more business with you. You can actually focus on what you do the best to make, to make everything more productive, right? save time, save money, and also increasing your sales um, as well. Right? And once, so third point is increase loyalty. And once you really believe the trust and transparency, transparency is quite important, that's going to be the DNA of your business, right? And also that's going to be a, have, that's going to have very positive impact internally and outside. So internally, right, people would like to work in for you. So that actually increases the loyalty that, um, of the employees. People don't want to leave your organizations. They want to stick with you. Same with your channel partners, same with, with your suppliers that outside of the business, because they think you're, you, uh, they can trust you and you're more transparent. And so they want to do more business with you. And then in the long term, rather than keep changing the suppliers or keep changing uh, the uh, well, as your customers, right? So once you achieve the top three, of course, you are running a faster growing business, right? So, um, and um, everything's going to be just so much better. And um, second one, would like to, I would like to talk about why trust and transparency is uh, uh, like very important for um, to businesses in accounting transactions. So the first one, more focused, right? If you're a legit business, um, you, you shouldn't have to worry about how you, uh, things like, oh, how do I hide my accounting transactions, right? So you certainly want to be as much as tr uh, trustworthy, transparent you are. So you can focus on what you do the best, which it will be helping your business to grow, make more money, right? So as a business owner myself, I don't want to spend, uh, well, I actually want to spend every single second to help this business achieve more sales and uh, talk to more customers and make sure that I can increase the quality of my product and services rather than try to try to think, okay, so where should I hide my, hide my cash underneath, underneath which of my uh, pillows in my bedroom, right? So um, that's just wasting my time. Um, and secondly, once your accounting transactions is trustworthy and, and uh, more, uh, more transparent, it helps with you get uh, help it help you to get more uh, uh, fundings from different um, different resources like lenders or brokers or the bank. Um, because um, many of you probably already know that um, sometimes business need actual funding from a, from a lender or brokers doesn't mean that they're going to go bankrupt next day. Right? It's just because the nature of the industry. For example, supply chain, right? Um, like e-commerce business. Um, everybody know that there's a, there's a huge delay on the shipment. So um, they won't get the product on time and they won't be able to make sales on time and they have money to cover uh, all their operating costs. So, but um, they run a pretty good business. Uh, once they have the, the sales, it's a very good cash flow business. So they just need some sort of short-term cash flow solutions to help them go get over the, um, the difficult time, right? Or construction business is another typical um, industry that constantly needs some short-term cash flow issues to help them um, to help them out. So the more so that comes with the that comes to the trust and transparencies in the accounting transactions, which means the more transparent you are, the better and quicker you can get the funding from the, the, um, the lenders to help you business go over the difficult time, right? Um, imagine if you have a, a accounting software that uh, the bank is not reconciled and then the, the, the whatever you have, uh, data you have is different to the best amounts you lodge or the tax return you lodge. Of course, when you provide the, uh, the financials, the banks or the lenders are gonna say no, right? Um, because they think the transactions are not trustworthy. Um, and um, that was also related to the, the, the investments. So, yep, you know, that's not brand names. Other ASX companies, they release their financial reports uh, publicly, right? So you can also see that it's a good business, uh, it's running very well. So uh, it gives more confidence also to the investors to, to put money into your business, right? So some people might say, ah, oh, I'm not running a small, medium-sized business. I don't need to publish my uh, reports uh, to anyone else. But, you know, it's interesting. Just yesterday, I was talking to a rich virtual CFO. He's, he's been helping one of his clients to invest $20,000 into an e-commerce business. 
doesn't mean that the e-commerce business is going to uh, going to get listed on ASX, but just purely because this is a good business and uh, very good um, uh, uh, incomes for the investors. So, which means as SMEs, you still have the opportunity to attract investments. But same thing, if your accounting transactions are not trustworthy and not transparent enough, no one will invest into your business because they think you're dodgy, right? So that's that should be a black and white, not brainer. We are, especially as accountants ourselves, we we're not that inside out. Yeah. So that will actually come back to why we do what we do, right? So exactly like why we uh, adopt e-commerce in technology combined with the blockchain, because we can see that once we do that, we can help to enhance the trust, enhance the transparencies for business and for accounting transactions. So make it more trustworthy. And uh, so, so first, talk about e-investing solutions, right? Make you guys more, make the business owner more focused because everything's being automated. Receive your transactions, um, accounting transactions into your accounting software from, from your suppliers. You don't have to spend the time to manually process, manually process anything, right? The data just appear there as a magic. Um, I always find it fascinating um, as an accountant myself. So yeah, that certainly makes you uh, to become more focused to do whatever you do the best to help your business grow, right? And then that's the one point. Second point, right? Once you process your, invo your invoice as a Pebble invoice and get through the blockchain, so that's actually a double validation of your transactions, right? And then people will actually, business will actually have more trust for the transactions because it's validated by the Pebble network. I will explain it a bit later. And also at the same time, I validate on the blockchain. But obviously, not everyone can have access to that um, the validation of the data on the, on the public blockchain. We'll certainly set up different access levels. Um, but um, you certainly will get what you need, especially when you want to release the data to, let's say, uh, the lender or the investors, right? So, so in that case, it helps you to get funding much in a much uh, simpler, smarter, and quicker way. Um, and also, that's... Um, that's another thing that we're going to talk about the decentralized finance because just because we are blockchain uh, blockchain friendly, so that's actually be able to attract um, the decentralized finance lending into the business. So they think, oh, that's a blockchain solutions. We can see that transactions got validated by Pebble, by by the blockchain, and um, as a as a DeFi investors, I trust this business more. So I'm happy to 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 invest into let's say to the bill, to the invoice, um, and or they could potentially invest into your business um, uh, just like a, you know, like a shares or something, right? Or equity, right? And then that will certainly make the investments process much quicker uh, as well because all the transactions are more trustworthy and transparent. Yeah, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's, that's how we plan to help business in these uh, three different areas, right? And um, that's why we, um, as I mentioned before, we're implementing Luca Plus, so other transactions will get valid, double validated, double validated through um, Pebble Network and blockchain, make it more trustworthy, and and uh, we'll automate that transactions. And and at the same time, when business is funding, um, all the lending pools and investors can see, all right, those transactions can be trust, can uh, and be, because they're very transparent. Yeah. I think uh, that's all about our products and solutions. I'm gonna not gonna dive into uh, too much details. Um, and yeah, the next one, uh, next things I will talk, I would like to talk about it is the Pebble um, uh, networks and how it works. So I think Mark also mentioned that at the beginning, right? Thinking about it in the telephone and the network uh, providers scenario. So you're having an Apple phone, they're trying to make a phone call or send a message to your friends. Uh, using a Samsung phone, let's, for example, right? And uh, so Apple phone itself, it needs a service provider. In that case, it could be Telstra. Yeah, let's just use Telstra. And uh, and you send a message to a friend. So your friend's using a Samsung phone and he or she's with the alters. And, um, and then they will receive the message and send the message into your friend's phone saying, hi, uh, Ray or Electro is trying to uh, contact you, uh, things like that. So that's exactly the same as how it works with this four corners model, right? So let, let's say if you're using zero, zero will be like your mobile uh, Apple mobile phone and send an invoice as a type of invoice to your customer. 
so PEP, uh, so zero is a, is a network service provider itself. So you grab the data from your zero, send it out to us as a number three, what we call call number three. Right, Luca Plus is a is a network service provider. We'll get the data and then send the data into your client's accounting software. Uh, or, or uh, the, like the example before, it's a, like a Samsung phone, right? So the data are just gonna um, uh, display appear in the into a QuickBooks straight away, right? Um, and um, I do have a user case as well. So there's a huge benefit you can see for the sender. It gives you confidence about you definitely can send that invoice into your uh, customer's accounting software. So if there's, you, you won't hear anything like, okay, right, I didn't receive your email and that email actually went into the junk mail. So that's why you didn't get paid on time, right? There's no more ex excuses like that because the data get transferred straight away from one system into the other ones. Um, and then for, the, for whoever receive it, I don't have to spend any time to manually process all these uh, painful data. So it just there straight away, right? That's how efficient the, um, that solution is. And at the same time as a point of three, right? Because uh, all the transaction got validated um, on the Pepple network and at the same time get validated on the blockchain. So make the whole transactions much more trustworthy and, and make your business more transparent to, um, uh, to whoever you, you want to uh, you, you want to be so uh, just making the whole things more efficient uh, and uh, make it better and simpler yeah um yeah that's all about the pepple network and yeah just also would like to share some stories and explain why we do what we do and uh, what we do what we plan to do in the future right so the the first one the first stats 115 billion dollars invoices get paid late to small business in Australia each year. That's a very scary number. Um, and that certainly will affect the cash flow for businesses, right? And then that's where we see the pain point is. So we like to help business um, solve the cash flow issues and make the whole process much simpler and quicker. So let's say if they need uh, some lending solutions, we can help them out through different um, so, uh, sources and, and uh, solutions. Uh, and the second um, second story is a, a real story of our, one of our early adopters. So um, yeah, she's using into a QuickBooks and then received um, and one day received an email. Um, looks like from his uh, that was from his her supplier. Uh, and uh, but but she goes, hey Ray, I thought I enabled uh, invoicing with my with my supplier, but I didn't see that invoice um, in my into QuickBooks but I did receive that email. So please check it out, make sure that uh, your product is working properly. Um, and, but I would like to make the payment straight away so because I don't like to be uh, seen as a lay payer. So I go, so hang on a second, before you do that, let me to check the invoice for you first. And then because in the first I realized, okay, there's nothing wrong with our system. So when I check the invoice, I realized, okay, right? Everything else looks exactly like the one that coming from her suppliers, except the payment terms, oh, sorry, the payment details, like the bank accounts, BSB and, and, uh, and account, uh, account numbers, right? So lucky I check it for you, lucky um, she called me because she thought the, the, uh, she enabled e invoicing and then we actually stopped her paying $5,500 to a scammer, right? So that's what Mark uh, mentioned at the beginning. So e invoicing certainly helped with um, avoid avoiding the, the fraud, invoice fraud um, in Australia. So yeah, the final story, a friend of my daughter's actually lost $300 in the Roblox game. That's also an interesting one, right? So um, why I would like to mention about that is because um, I we can see that, that there's a trend, potentially more and more people will, will start doing business in a metaverse. Right? And that will be a similar scenario when you transact your business um, accounting transactions in the, in the metaverse or in the Roblox, right? Certainly first, no one's gonna send you a PDF copy anymore. It will certainly will be, uh, we believe will be e-invoicing. Um, and, uh, but how do you get validated of that transactions, right? How, how do you actually make sure that you trust that party that you send the money to? So you, you don't have to worry about um, losing your money um, and giving it to someone else, right? So I think, Combining with Pebble um, e invoicing solutions and the blockchain will be a perfect solution to validate that transaction, to validate the, also to validate validate the party. Um, because um, also as uh, Mark mentioned at the beginning, so um, to register for Pebble, right, you need to provide your ABN, 
and uh, you, you also need to provide your business name. We also validate um, through your email as well to so make sure that you are actually an authorized party to register people for your uh, for your business or for, for your client's business. So it's, a, it's certainly like a, a double, triple, uh, a secure, secured way and validation um, for the transaction. So yeah, our, our plans, right? So like I mentioned before, help more business to enable people invoicing in the metaverse when they want to do business in the future. Yeah, and also helping businesses to create invoices as an NFT. So again, that actually relates to, the, to DeFi lending pool solutions. You can actually start selling your invoice or, or get funding to, um, to your bills um, on chain. So um, it's kind of like, a, that's actually different to the traditional finance solutions, right? Uh, and, then, um, and then the final points, right? Make, make the um, transaction easier for business to process in the digital wallet. Um, so I think if you guys, some of you probably has, um, used uh, using Luca Plus. You can see that there's a there's a function um, in our app. You can actually link your wallet with our our product solutions. We we certainly want to improve that to make sure that um, you know businesses can transact um, better and easier through uh, through the through the digital world. Yeah, and then that, yeah, that's that will be it. Uh, and if what we're saying really resonates you, and also you believe the same. Let's all try to enable e working together, right? This is like a big network solutions, networks um, uh, impact. The more people on the network, the more powerful it's gonna get, the more benefits we can get as a business. Um, so that's exactly like what it says here, alone we can do so, so little, but together we can achieve so much. So um, yeah, I'll be waiting for you to send me a, an email saying, hi, I have enabled e working let's try it out, right? So that'll be an exciting time. Yeah, and then that's all. That's all my, uh, um, I'll, I would like to talk about, right? Feel free to send the QR code and then, uh, and then we're happy to have a chat with you. All right, thank you, Electra. Excellent presentation, Ray. Wow, there was so much to unpack in there. I'm glad I got this recording so everyone can play it slowly while watching the slides and, and absorb what was, what was revealed by your presentation. And that is a big plan you have to take e-invoicing to Mars. Fantastic. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll have some questions for, for Ray in here. Um, so, um, so now Rex has asked, what data can be translated over the PEPOL structure? Oh, that's technical. Ray or Mark? Look, I can jump in first, Ray. Um, so the PEPL uh, framework is mainly uh, designed for the procure to pay uh, system and order to cash. So we've got all the documents there uh, for all the different variations you have that. Um, what Ray is talking about the Mars, and you can correct me here, Ray, but uh, look, it, it's a that four corner model could be extensible down the track, but we've got uh, already, you know, we start with the invoice, obviously we're rolling out um, purchase orders, credit notes, et cetera, into the future but uh, all those procurement type uh, artifacts are ready to go in specifications. If we were to specify something different or um, out of the box, then yeah, it would go through a normal uh, change process to develop that. But Ray, uh, your view on your Mars trip? Yeah, no, very similar, very similar. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Any insights on how incorrect invoices will be dealt with? Well, we're preempting the, the issues we may have to deal with here. Incorrect so was invoices. it incorrect invoices, uh, Electra? Yeah, it sounds like, you know, with everything being sort of automated and triggered here, transactions being triggered by mm -hmm. software events. Um, so Tanya has asked, how will incorrect invoices be dealt with? Can they be retracted? Can monies be stopped? Yeah, but the payment channel okay. is separate. Okay. You, you go, you go uh, uh, Ray, because you know the system well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So I think first, uh, let's talk about system by system, right? I think with the, uh, I believe here we're talking about uh, as, a, as a customer or clients receiving an invoice from suppliers, what what, do, what happens if that's a, a, like an incorrect invoice or, or wrong or incorrect amount, uh, if, I'm, if I'm right. So if that's the case, um, for like, for example, for zero, right? I think in zero, you have a, a draft section. Uh, I think that's, that's how they structure it. Uh, that's this process. So all the PEPL e invoice will get landed into the draft section. So as accountants and bookkeepers, then we really have to help our clients out by using our brain to, uh, to help them to allocate those transactions 
uh, into the right place, uh, which is good win-win, right? So we can charge more device fees or uh, service fees, I believe, and then and then clients clients happy because you know everything's been automated. Uh, and um, and for Intel Equip Boost, currently it goes uh, directly into the expenses page, uh, but you can still manually change the amount of information if you want or even delete it. But what we plan to do is uh, going forward, we plan to get all the transactions first, land it at, uh, Luca Plus, on Luca Plus platform first. So as accountants, bookkeepers, or financial controllers, uh, get onto our, 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 our platform, review everything. If you're happy with it, click on approve, then it goes into the system. And if you don't like it, we also give you a reject uh, button, click on the reject, uh, you can put the um, the message, tell the sender why you reject it and uh, go from there rather than straight away mess up your account. So yeah, and then you have to manually delete everything in your accounting system, which is, uh, is uh, such a pain in the ass, I believe. Yeah. Hope that yeah, answers the question. Asking, um, and Ray, this will be a question for you. Will businesses, invoices, data transactions be exposed to the public on a blockchain network? So we're speaking about mm. private versus public blockchain, yeah. here, I think. Yep. Yeah, not the uh, not one hundred percent. Only the hash, and um, the hash actually means nothing to anyone, right? I believe if if I, I assume you guys all experienced uh, blockchain before, so you know the transactions occurred on the blockchain, it will hash or have a hash attached it. Uh, and what we'll, what we will do in the future is we'll give a different access to different people. Uh, so for example, right, as I mentioned before, if you plan to lend. Uh, if you plan to uh, borrow some money from lenders and you want to show them you're actually more trustworthy and more transparent, you can actually choose to release your data, more data to uh, the, the, the other third party or like the lender, right, for example. So okay, certainly so not 100% invoice. Yeah. So with, the, with this yeah. blockchain being utilized here, you can control how much data is revealed and, Correct. and not. That's right. Yeah. Do we yeah. have any other questions here? Those, those were good insights. You're asking some great questions here. Okay, well, so Luca Plus is clearly a, a pretty good choice for businesses to investigate, um, it seems, as, as the invoicing software. If they're looking to get into the, a, a Web3 space with crypto and, and do businesses uh, business over decentralised blockchain networks, Web3 and such, and other businesses might be positioning themselves for e-commerce, accessing customers in the, the Web3 space to broaden their um, sort of global um, possibilities. So, you know, for, for if getting started in invoice, the invoicing, these sorts of clients might be identified, but just generally, it's, it's just generally a good tool, not just for businesses getting into Web3. It's always a pleasure to give you a voice, Ray, to share our conversations with a wider appreciative audience. That, that was fascinating. And um, with your sign up, uh, I'll be... Um, writing up a, an article based on, on this recorded transcript for everyone here to, to ponder and look up the points you raised about e-invoicing and um, in a DeFi environment. So if we don't have any more questions, I'll um, ask you just, Ray, just to, to stop screen sharing for a moment. And, oh, uh, all right, sorry. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, if you want to learn more about doing uh, business on blockchain, please subscribe to um, Digital Playhouse's on-chain project. I'll just put the, uh, I think I just put it in the, um, in the chat box, which I can't find now because I've got too many screens. <laughs> so digitalplayhouse.org.au uh, has a, an on-chain, accountants on-chain um, project. Uh, and if you sign up on that page, you'll be notified when we launch our classrooms and, and upcoming events. I'll also be at ZeroCon talking on the blockchain panel. So feel free if you're there to come up and, and say hi to me. And um, yeah, thank you very much, Mark and Ray. And thank you everyone for joining us today. You'll be receiving a recording and slides for your further studies. And um, today's Zoom attendees will also be emailed a CPD verification for today too. And also in the mail out, I'll send you any more material, Mark, that you might like to share with our accountants. Love to. I'll Love send a fact sheet. A bigger pardon? I've got a great fact sheet there that people can download and send to clients, so. Okay, excellent. Now's a good time to distribute that information widely to say that you attend, tell your clients you attended e-invoicing week with the ATO and you have all this information for them. Um, and if you come to our page and want to learn more about blockchain and, 
and, and how it's been used. This is a really good one coming up, real world perspectives for Web3 enterprises and their advisors. Just giving it a plug if we want to put more of what we've talked about in today into context. But today is really about um, e-invoicing. I have used Luca Plus. I've um, had a look at some others and um, yeah, um, get in early and understand it before your clients do so we can make sure they set up properly. Do you have anything more to add, Mark or Ray? No, I really appreciate the time. Oh, and as you said, um, you talk to your clients, no doubt they'll start talking to you and then start talking to their supply chain, which you know, word of mouth of like anything um, uh, really sells uh, the um, story. Fantastic. Okay, well, if, if that's all we have for today, then um, I look forward to seeing you, speaking to you all again at future events. Have a good day. Have a happy Friday. Bye now.